Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Vulcan Report. This end of day report is for trading on Friday, April, I'm sorry, May the 5th, I'm still in April, May the 5th, 2017. Well, let's take a look here how the last trade of the week panned out, ticker symbol XYL. Uh, exploded higher today, uh, closing up, uh, what is that, we'll call it, what, 78 cents, doing really nice here, breaking away. You see, we basically um, just had an, an upward swing all day today, as you can see here. So it ended up very nice, back and filled on the weekly, and it's just ready to take off as anticipated. Uh, so this is a really nice one uh, holding over night uh taking a look at the queue not so good end of day right into the close the market turns and rallies and hits a new high thus stopping me out so the short did not pan out. i think i was a little ahead of time on this one but that's all right because what do we have here we have the possibility of a turning point coming up here now based on our closing ranking, All right, turning over there. Uh, we did get that sell signal uh, two days ago, and it didn't really come into fruition. We kind of like to stayed here. So it may not be ready to turn just yet, but we are flattening out, as you can see. Uh, not a lot of conviction in this. Not a lot of, um, uh, you know, with not, not a lot of length, not a lot of trading range. It's really flat, like a, like a drift, you know, Tokyo drift. That's basically what you got going on here. So still watching this one and um, ready to attack and pull the trigger again when necessary. All right, but you don't care about that. You want to know what is going on with gold. I still believe we're in that bottoming process. We just need maybe one more capitulation, probably crash below the Kumo cloud, scare people to death, and then we do a quick V-shaped recovery, and then you got these ramps for the market to grow into over time. So that's kind of uh, the way I'm seeing this one playing out right now. But I did warn you, as you see here on your weekly chart, we see we did roll over beautifully. We're still in the Kumo cloud of death. Don't forget that. All right, so we still don't know if it's necessarily going to be over yet. You are technically in free fall. Bottom of the Kumo cloud is in play, and that's going to put you into the low 1200s. We're at 1228 now, so that's going to put us around 1210-ish uh, is in play. But then again, like I said, you got this ramp coming up. So we'll see uh, what kind of floor we find. But as of now, we have not found one. We've lost all momentum, and the selling pressure picked up beginning of the week, and we kind of tapered off today. Tried to get a corrective uh, take back Friday, but not really. All right, close back down at the low. Looking at silver. What can you say? Silver's been more of a free fall situation than gold. Look at this. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen, just straight down. That's what silver does to you. Silver will hurt your feelings. We fell from 1865 all the way down to 1621, and it seems to be no end in sight. Only two up days. <laughs> Only two up days, people. Come on. This is, this is ridiculous. So there has to be a bottoming process coming in here somewhere. Do we have any signs of life? Not, mm -mm, no, we don't. We don't have a pulse, ladies and gentlemen. We do not have a pulse. We're losing the patient on the table. Uh, we're gonna keep doing administering CPR, but this is deathly. If these, if this momentum crosses down and it starts to accelerate, this could get us down to at least the $14 handle in silver. We'll keep watching it and see, but it's just not looking good right now. Uh, as far as calling the bottom. Looking at your GDX, looking at these miners, pretty much the same scenario, albeit not as, 
the GDX is not as bad as the GDXJ, put it that way. You had a gap here. We back and filled this gap. Now I think we're setting up for the next leg down. Unless we can get some uh, some momentum under this. I mean, you just don't have it right now. There's no momentum in this market right now, despite today's bounce uh, off the lows. Looking at your GDXJ, same thing. All right. GDXJ has been weaker than GDX, all right? The juniors are weaker than the big boys right now, unfortunately. Look at that, okay? Trying to get something going right in here. Trying to get something going. We're either going to break down or we're going to break out. And if we do, we could get a run back up to around the $32 handle in the GDXJ. All right, so that's something to hope for. That's going to still hit you against some terrible resistance. Once you get up to around the 32, uh, we'll say $33 handle, that's going to be major resistance. And if it can get up to there and recover and get back to 35, then the downtrend is over. And then we start talking about a bullish situation that's brewing. You still got this air pocket, which is a strong resistance as well. And it's going to get up and over this Kuma cloud. Now you're talking, you know, getting getting back up into about the $40 level. That's a long way off. You see the hurdle this thing has to accomplish? This is the beginning of a downtrend, folks. All right, this is not the end of a downtrend. This is the beginning of one. So in order to cease this and cut this out, it's going to have to, it's going to have to a lot to overcome. The, the price destruction on the chart is overwhelming. So just we're going to wait and see if the bottom of the process even begins. But we got a hint that it may be. All right, let's look at your natural gas and see where we're at there. How do we do this week with that? All right, that finished up on the week, looking really good, looking really powerful, really strong, like it is absolutely ready to make that run to 350. So, yes, for the natural gas, looking great. So, looking at the U-Gas, you can see that the U-Gas is the beneficiary of that, and you can see that the U-Gas is exploding up nicely, which is what we want to see. All right? So first target, start off next week, it's going to be that, uh, I want to say $21. We want to get up and out of this cloud. We're going to need to close above $24.38 to get out of this Kumo cloud of death and start to build a floor around that $24. All right, so got, got a long way to go yet, but this is what we're looking at. And, of course, you want to know about that crude oil. Crude oil got punished, got spanked, and you can see here, though, this is a nice reversal, but we got a pointer. We got a pointer, and we can't ignore it on the, on the daily chart and also on the weekly chart. Can't really ignore that. Now, we probably will correct it a little bit more, but you know at some point we got to deal with this. It's like a gap. It has to be dealt with. All right, you cannot ignore these, cannot. I've already shown you examples of this. So this is going to have to be dealt with at some point. Looking at OIH, which is the benefactor of the crude oil futures, you can see here it's trying to turn as well, trying to bounce. And this is where we stand. So you finish the week here below your blue momentum line, still well below that, all right? And then you got this just gargantuan ramp coming up on the weekly chart. Can't ignore that either. At some point, we're going to get on board with this, and this thing is going to catapult to the moon and get back up to the higher end of the range again. Let me just go back and show you what this trading range is looking like. And this crude oil again, you're not going to necessarily see it on the daily chart, but you will be able to see it on the weekly chart. So let's just move this back. You can see how we were in this range 
you were just drifting here, so then you came back to the bottom of the range, rallied to the top of the range. Now we're here at the bottom. This time we took out this prior support. Now it's trying to reverse back up again, but no. I think we're putting in the next leg down where we're going to range and establish the range for the next leg, and this will be the bar to do it. Just like this was the bar for this prior range. So this is where we are. So I'm calling for further weakness on this one. All right. Um, have I forgotten anything? Have I left out anything? I don't think I have. Um, oh, looking at the dollar. Let's pull that one up. All right, the dollar is also looking like it's about to fall off a cliff on the daily. On the weekly chart, though, you have these enormous ramps coming up. Enormous. That's why I was telling you guys, you know, since the Bitcoin broke away from the dollar temporarily, you want to get ready to take profit, take some money off the table in that Bitcoin, because as they come back into alignment, the, the Bitcoin will have to pull back and correct while this gets its act together. I still see 106 by the end of the year, though, in this dollar. I just don't see how they can have a cheap uh, dollar policy when there's really nothing to export. <laughs> All right, so strong dollar, they're going to need it. It's nothing, there's just no way around it. I just don't don't see how they can avoid it. All right, and oh, bonds. Let's see how the bonds ended up. And our bonds finally broke away too uh, and broke down to the downside, then try to correct today, but we still have lost momentum. We don't have momentum. And we have now this trend line support that is technically acting as resistance. 151.27 is new resistance. So now we're trading at the bottom side of the range and may be in the verge of putting in another leg down and establishing a lower range, trading range. However, you do have a ramp scenario coming up after a long uh, period of consolidation, so that could help boost things a little bit. But I think it's just going to keep it afloat and keep the bond prices from crashing too low because I don't think that they'll be able to raise rates again anytime soon. All right, so that's, I think, what this is spelling out to us right now. All right, with that being said, that's what we got. So remember, PulseWaveTrading.com, PulseWaveTrading.com, where you can learn how to trade the markets. Follow me on Twitter at uh, The Vulcan Report. And you can also um, register at the website, PulseWaveTrading.com, so you can keep abreast of the latest news, what's going on. Uh, latest webinars, things of that nature, and uh, invest in yourself. Come learn how to trade and uh, learn how to follow these algorithms and benefit from what the central banks fail to do and what they try to manipulate and do. And with that being said, have a wonderful weekend. And remember, bulls make money, bears make money, and pigs get slaughtered. So remember to take what you can and give nothing back. Peace.